Hello everybody and welcome to another video with me, Matt Goddard from The Boxing Locker. And today I'm going to talk to you about Jake Paul versus Tommy Fury. Tommy Fury obviously winning by a split decision. I'm going to assume you've watched the fight. I managed to see the fight. I did not pay for the pay-per-view, but somebody live streamed it. And I managed to catch 99% um, of the fight. I missed the first minute of the first round. Um, what did I think of the fight? I think uh, in a positive and a negative way, it was a very even fight. Um, why do I think that's the case? Um, it was a positive because the eyes on the fight um, find it more entertaining, uh, are more engaged with the action, and as such, are more likely to watch other boxing. A negative because it reflects very poorly on professional boxers who have dedicated their whole career to boxing, um, to then see a guy like Jake Paul who's trained for four or five years, um, box no boxers, take a guy in Tommy Fury who's, who's essentially been boxing his whole life a full eight rounds. Um, getting into the nitty gritty of it, did I think the result was correct? Yes, I thought, I thought Fury probably won. Um, I think it was a lot closer than a lot of people are giving it credit for. Um, I think from a analytical perspective, things to take note are take note of are that Jake Paul was landing a lot of slip jabs. He was dropping out the way of the jab. A lot of Fury's straight punches were not landing clean. Um, I, I don't think, I think for some reason they gave a lot of power punches to Tommy Fury and I don't think at any point he really did a huge amount of damage with any of the shots he landed. I think there were maybe two times when I saw him land shots and I thought, oh, here he goes. Um, he only really had great success when he threw punches in bunches. But to be honest, when he was doing that, he showed absolutely zero defensive responsibility whatsoever. His hands weren't coming back to his chin. His head was high. His feet were squaring up. And it was only really the, the relative inexperience and um, lack of defensive skill set that Jake Paul has that meant he didn't capitalise on that opportunity. Uh, also, Tommy um, was just eating jabs all night, uh, eating jabs, literally just every round, bop, straight down the pipe, the slip jab, pop, straight down the pipe, the jab to the body. Um, I think with any sort of reasonable, even English level, professional cruiserweight, I think that's a different night, um, a different night's work for Tommy Fury, and I think he would really, really struggle. Um, I think his lack of defensive skill set is um, blatant. Uh, he, he boxes with a low guard in the manner of a reactive, speedy Roy Jones, um, Pernell Whitaker, Nazim Hamadesk head mover. And he just doesn't have that reactivity. He doesn't have those fast reactions to get the, out the way of the punches. He doesn't really make many shots miss. Um, when he used his feet, he defended nicely, kept his guard a bit longer, moved his feet. Um, and his flick jab, the jab from nice and low, what? Nice and fast. It landed well a couple of times. We saw Jake Paul's eye on that, on that lead side um, was, was demonstrating that he had landed that punch plenty of times, that, that, that Fury had landed that punch. Um, but... Yeah, from an from a analytical perspective, watching Tommy Fury as a boxer and uh, assessing his potential future in boxing, I do not think he's going to go very far. Um, he does not have the skill set of his brother. Um, and to be honest, I question whether he really wants to be there. I think perhaps his, his name, uh, the kind of the, the, the pressure on that name, um, that, that a lot of he's put on himself, but the pressure on that name... Um, is, is definitely an issue for him. Um, and, and perhaps also the pressure that his, his dad puts on him to, to be a, a fighting man um, is also a difficult thing to deal with. I'm not sure he 100% wants to be there, particularly when he's making so much money as a, as a quote unquote celebrity, um, you know, in Love Island, doing all these kind of things. I, I bet the guy gets paid an absolute fortune to, to show up places. Um, does he really need to be um, killing himself to, to get him fight shape to fight um, top top boxers um, in that division you know the likes of the likes of uh, you know Lawrence Acoli for example I mean can you imagine him getting past the round with Lawrence Acoli um, Acoli would go what what and that would be game over there and then um, 
from a perspective of watching Jake Paul analytically, um, he's a better boxer than I, I expected of him. Um, he panicked when he got hit. He had no defense when he was backed up. Um, he fell in with his shots and there was no real timing or intent behind the overhands that he was throwing. If he'd been a little bit more intelligent, he would have landed that shot. And if he'd thrown it a little bit straighter rather than looping it over like, a, um, like he was bowling a cricket ball. Um, the number of times he went to the body and Fury dropped low with his head high, tried to throw a right hand. If at that point, Paul had come over the top, arced the Tommy Hearns-esque right hand in, that would have landed. But instead he was looping over and getting too close and smothering his own work. Um, he was slipping and throwing a left hook, which is a shot I really like, a slip inside left hook. But then not capitalising on that, following through with the straight right hand. Um, and, and actually, as I said earlier, the slip jab was landing a lot. The body jab a few times, the slip jab a lot. But when he worked, he seemed to rush his work and fall in. Um, there was no real composure. Um, his defence was very minimal. He would slip the shot nicely. The hand was in front which defended the straight shots, but then the hooks came round in the minute. Fury flashed that lead hook and threw more than one punch. They pretty much all landed, not necessarily clean and not doing a great deal of damage, but they all landed. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention on the Fury analysis was that the, the feet cross over and he squares himself up as he's coming in and he's upright, just punching here. And, and that lack of balance and stability means that if he walks onto any straight shots or uppercuts, he's going straight back. Even if he doesn't fall, he's going to, um, he's going to fall backwards um, and, and stumble. Uh, <clears throat> from a Jake Paul perspective, demonstrate that he's improved dramatically. Um, and actually, you know, with another three, four years, maybe he will be a reasonable boxer. Um, needs a lot more sparring, needs to keep boxing people of that level. Don't worry about taking losses. Keep boxing at that level and that will bring him on much faster because it, it gives you a much clearer picture of the, the progressions the things you need to work on, the, um, the skill set you need to enhance before you are capable of, of doing um, what you need to do to win those kind of fights. Um, I think I was, I, was probably, I was probably expecting him to be a little bit calmer, um, a, little bit more, a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more patient, to pick big shots rather than, rather than try and force the pace. I think uh, if he'd slowed down and stopped chasing Tommy so much and learned to step across and cut the ring off rather than following him around the outside of the ring, it would have been a completely different fight. Um, but for a guy who's had six, six pro fights that were all against MMA fighters um, and he's only had four or five years boxing experience, it really wasn't that bad, you know? The, the thing to remember with this fight is um, the, the perception is skewed because... People think you're being unnecessarily and unfairly harsh on Fury and unfairly rewarding and um, generous to, to Paul. But the, the reality is that, that Fury is in a boxing family. He's been boxing his whole life. Um, he had an amateur career. He's boxed as a professional on, on big events. Um, and Jake Paul is a YouTuber with no boxing experience prior to four or five years ago. Um, who's trained hard in the meantime and, and kind of tried to develop a little bit of experience. And so when you judge them, you judge them based off of their history, their achievements, um, their respective kind of um, promotion in the media, you know? And, and, I think, um, and I think Fury, for me, was unimpressive, um, looked weak against a, a very weak boxer, looked susceptible to being badly damaged against anybody with any sort of reasonable boxing ability. Um, by that I mean professional boxers like, you know, the likes of European British title fighters, you know, um, Richard uh, Ripport and um, uh, Chris Billiam Smith were great examples of that, you know. Two big guys, can you imagine Tommy Fury being in with either of those? I think he'd be in, um, he'd be in a lot of danger if that was the case. Um, and then Jake Paul, on the other hand, is, is performing better than should really be expected of a guy at that level. He's obviously dedicated himself to training. He took the loss reasonably well. One thing I hate to see is excuse making. Um, and he didn't make too many, but you know, I had an arm injury. I wasn't, I wasn't too well through camp. I, I hate all that. Um, I don't think anyone should ever say that, even if it's true. I think the reality of it is 
if it was so bad you shouldn't have fought um, and and actually it diminishes it diminishes your yourself and and people's perception of you because you appear as an excuse maker even if it is true so um, take the loss invoke the rematch clause which I believe he will um, and and move forward from there um, <coughs> excuse me uh, so yeah what what's next Tommy Fury I think um, it will be the rematch with with Jake Paul which I think he probably will win easier a second time I think the the pressure of the event in all fairness then will have got to him um, the amount of eyes on that for a guy who's only had eight bouts is crazy um, he deserves a bit of credit for taking that so well um, which I am giving him he is he is um, he did really well to, to kind of um, to to handle that as well as he did um, and also he was really good afterwards I like to see him go over to Jake Paul and, and say the things he did be respectful um, congratulate Paul on giving him a good fight that's always great to see him boxing um, and I really like that about Tommy that was really good obviously with all of the kind of rubbish they were talking beforehand it's nice to see that kind of thing um, and then I, I believe he mentioned in the in the post fight interview fighting KSI um, for me that's where Tommy is at for now I think he needs to stay in that kind of YouTuber zone um, beat those guys make tons of money and then if I was him I would give up um, he doesn't need to be boxing the amount of money he's going to be making boxing these YouTube guys. Um, and and those, those extra two fights that I mentioned, the Paul rematch and the, and the KSI fight, would make him a fortune. And I've got to say, from a business perspective, from a, a human perspective, I admire the guy for making an absolute fortune with the fact that he's good looking, that he's got a good body, and that, um, and that he's, he's got a skill set that means he can take advantage of these guys. Um, as I said, yeah, I admire that and, and congratulations to the guy. Um, for Jake Paul, he's going to have the rematch. I think he'll probably lose and hopefully that'll put an end to his boxing career. Um, not from the perspective of him stopping boxing because I think it's great that people do boxing, but maybe um, from the perspective of him uh, pursuing the idea that he is a legitimate professional boxer. I think if he does lose again, then maybe he should start from the start again, fight a couple of journeymen, fight a couple of guys who are losing records build up a little bit more experience and kind of grow as a fighter um, how everybody else has to you know that's the reality of it you know you get used to being in front of crowds by boxing journeymen by boxing lower tier fighters by boxing guys who are losing records debutantes and that's how you build up your experience and you develop that skill set in front of people um, so yeah that, that's my thoughts on that to be honest it was a better event than I thought it would be um, I wasn't as disappointed as I thought it would because it was more even than it should have been, but that made it a little bit more entertaining. So from that perspective, sometimes you've got to switch off your boxing brain and just say, look, it's an entertainment event and that's all it is. Um, and I enjoyed it for that. So yeah, there we have it. Um, thank you for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, I'm sure plenty of people will tell me that I was unfair on Tommy Fury, but uh, I like to be honest in my approach and my appraise of the people. Um, and as I said, lots of positives from him, but also quite a few negatives. Maybe he'll go back and work on those in the gym. Maybe he'll go back and do some more celebrity stuff. I don't blame him either way. As always, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching to the end. I appreciate you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share everywhere. Take care, guys.